but for video four we're going to focus on measuring runoff and talking about discharge and what the term discharge means with respect to hydrology and environmental engineering. So one of the reasons why we may do work with runoff is because we might be asked or tasked with flood control efforts, emergency preparedness, and you might have situations where right now we're just going to do more of a typical 1.4 inches of rain in a given hour type event, but there might be situations where you have a 4 inch per hour rainstorm. And what's that going to do to maybe a watershed like Silver Creek and people that are all the way down here at the bottom of it? You know, 80,000 acres of, of watershed. What does it mean for these folks? And I pick on Silver Creek because um, it's right here. EKU is on the back end of EKU's campus. Richmond and EKU kind of like sit at the headwaters of a few different streams. So we've got Dreaming Creek and Otter Creek and Taylor Fork, which flows in the Silver Creek. So we've got a variety of, of watersheds that EKU impacts and Silver Creek's one of the easier ones to work with for us. Starts all the way down here near the Pentacles, um, and then it joins here. We have a Taylor Fork that forms Will Green Lake, also known as Taylor Fork Lake, um, and that flows all the way to the Kentucky River. And then that's uh, you got, uh, got Cates Creek uh, in here somewhere too. All right, so why it might run off calculations be important? Well, not only for flood control prevention efforts, but also um, from a permitting standpoint. More storm water coming off of your factory or off of your plant might be something of concern. Changes in land use may cause um, concern for folks. And if you're going to be putting a new parking lot for employees or for customers or changing the roof, a lot of these things can still impact how much water runs off a given site. So what are the possible measurements in which we might measure runoff? And what might we need to know in order to calculate runoff other than just like how big the watershed is and how much it rains? So we're going to come back to that slide here in a minute. So how do we measure runoff? Well, runoff is measured with the letter Q because runoff is a type of discharge and water that's moving, or not just water, even like fluids, um, like oil, those things can be measured in terms of like discharge. Discharge is a volume per unit time. So like it's a rate with some volume to it. So like a rate, you can think of like miles per hour. Well, in the case of like discharge, we're thinking of like cubic feet of water per second or cubic meters of water per second, or gallons per second, or gallons per minute. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about pumps and how much water they can pump in gallons per minute in GPM. When you talk to the Army Corps of Engineers, how fast or how much water is moving out of a lake or down the Ohio River, the answer may be it's moving at, you know, 500 cubic feet per second. 4,000 cubic feet per second. That's a measure of discharge. How do we measure discharge? It's the cross-sectional velocity times the cross-sectional area. So area is kind of like the height and you know depth. I guess you could make it square that way and then how fast is it moving that way? So there's three dimensions and then a time component. So it's a volume per unit time. Manning's equation is one way we can do it. If you're taking a hydrology class, a civil engineering class, or an environmental geology class, it might have you work some with it, where you've got to work with the velocity um, that the water is moving, the flow area. So there's your you know, volume per unit time, but you also need to know like how rough is the surface that the water is running over, like overland flow or even creek bottom, the hydrologic radius, um, the channel slope. So what's the angle? That all matters. The rational equation is a lot more simplistic and all these require you to use certain units. The rational equation requires you to use cubic feet per second 
your your uh, precipitation or rainfall intensity is in inches per hour, and the drainage area has to be in acres. It's a very U.S.-based measurement. If you're in Europe or China, Japan, Africa, no one's going to know how to use this rational equation because it doesn't work with the metric units that would be prescribed. So you have to do it in these units. CFS or cubic feet per second for discharge, precipitation intensity in inches per hour, and area has to be in acres. Has to be that way or the units won't work out. So it's a simplistic estimating tool. It's like a back of the napkin tool for estimating runoff. It's not perfect but it teaches the concepts and um, lets you at least make some rough estimations from a low end to a high end. What you do not see, you don't see like the slope, you don't see like the history of rainfall and like existing soil saturation. You don't see any of that. So we try to make it work. You can estimate a low range and a high range or you can kind of pick middle values. There's all kinds of different ways to apply the rational equation. So what do these runoff coefficients mean? So in Q equals CIA, discharge is the answer that we're trying to come up with. The precipitation intensity in inches per hour can be obtained from a rain gauge. The acres can be obtained from like a map or it's already been established or known. The runoff coefficient can be estimated from a map from looking at like satellite imagery or GIS imagery that's already identified the actual land and you potentially could identify these coefficients in advance. So what goes into the runoff coefficient? Well the runoff coefficient really is just a percentage estimate of like what percent of the water that hits that surface runs off. So like concrete streets, for example, 70 to 95% of the water that hits it from like the rain will run off. Now there's permeable concrete out there now. That would not be 70 to 95%. Some of that permeable concrete stuff, we'll show videos of it in the next, uh, next section. It just soaks the concrete up, like the water up into the concrete like a giant sponge. All right, roofs. Like you can think of like a steel roof, these become real popular. How much rain water runs off? The water runs off those really fast, whereas like shingles, uh, wooden shakes, those things can like absorb water a little bit better, a little bit more. So when rain hits this stuff, it goes off in a hurry. So there's a range on roofs. So upwards to 95% or more of the water will run off to on the low end, 75% will run off. Streets, brick streets, um, you can go down to lawns. Lawns, very little water runs off. Even like uh, less grazed, highly productive, grassy cow pastures, only 12% runs off. A heavily grazed, almost barren pasture, when it rains on it, maybe as much as 62% of the water runs off. So. Forest land, very little water runs off, so they have the lowest coefficients. So how do we actually apply the rational equation to Silver Creek? So we're going to go through an example here in a second where if you were asked to be able to do a runoff uh, calculation for like how much rainfall would you expect to run off, how would you do it? So here is information for your coefficients. So Q equals CIA, how do we solve Q equals CIA? And we're gonna go back to those initial uh, bits of information really quick. But before we go into that, do you know what this map depicts? And I believe that's Liberia, which their flag looks a lot like the United States. Um, this map isn't, uh, I don't think it's the, the right scale, um, but it might be. Um, the United States here. That is Myanmar, it used to be called Burma, maybe it still is. Um, but uh, Myanmar, Liberia, and the US, we all use US measurements. The rest of the world's all on metric. So we're the only people that are like talking in feet and pounds, and inches, and gallons. The rest of the world's like talking like meters, 
leaders. So just keep that in mind uh, for your future work that, you know, some of the stuff we're talking about in here would have to be converted into the metric system. So we're going to do a little sample calculation here in a second. So you can go ahead and try to do your own estimation if you want. Um, given that the watershed is 80,640 acres and 1.4 inches of rain fell. And here are the different land uses. So I'm going to go through a little example here and um, put that up in the next video.